Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast. I'm Captain Logan. And I am Vince. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at the new 52, DC's new relaunch. We're going to talk a little bit about what we think of the relaunch on the whole. We'll uh, d- uh, touch on some specific issues we read. We won't talk about all 52 issues individually, partly because we didn't read all of them, and uh, partly because we want to do a, more of an overview thing, and, we, and, and I like personally, Vince, to focus mostly on what the 52 what, what our predictions are for the 52 and what, what we think mm-hmm. it, it's 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 a uh, its impact is so far on the uh, comic book industry and what its impact is going to be on it in, in, in the future and also um, you know if we think that it is really worth the hype that it's been getting so you know I kind of want to I think this is a good place to start it's uh when I first heard that they were gonna do a massive relaunch I thought wow I don't know if I like that idea. But after a little bit of time, I started to ease into it, and I thought, you know, a fresh start, this is going to be kind of interesting, kind of new. And it's not new. There's so much of it that's spawned straight out of the old continuity, and then there's some of it that is not. So I don't understand why we have to restart some and then base some on the old continuity and then... uh, and then have a screwy timeline to where all of this stuff has to happen in a five-year radius or whatever you want to call it. I should also point out that it's that the idea itself is not new, yeah. and it's being touted out like it is. It's being touted out like like it, not only is it a relaunch of 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 everything, but it's it, they're they're acting as if this is the first time something like this has happened. <laughs> if they really really did completely start over from scratch, that would be something that DC has never really done before. Mm-hmm. Because even with Crisis, there were things that were kept around. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. I mean, so so this is uh, Manos and I were talking about this the other day, and and of course Manos has been around a little bit longer than us and has a um, a different perspective on this. <laughs> And, and, and Mano said, this is the third time they've done this. Yeah. I mean, they had uh, Crisis on Infinite, Crisis on Multiple. and uh, Well, Crisis on Multiple was a different thing, but they tried. They kind of tried this with, with Infinite Crisis. Mm-hmm. I didn't read Infinite Crisis, but, uh, you know, part of the problem is is that they... It's, it's not really a problem. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Infinite Crisis. Zero Hour. Oh, yeah. I forgot all about yes. Zero Hour. I didn't read that one either, because... After I read Infinite Crisis, I thought, I don't want to read any of their massive crossovers ever again. <laughs> you meant Crisis on Infinite Earths, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, those are different. What did I say? You said Infinite Crisis. I, yeah, yeah just, I I'm meant sorry. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, God. Oh, They're aren't so... comics confusing? Yes. <laughs> you know, when I say convoluted, that just barely scratches the surface of what Crisis on Infinite Earths is about. Uh, well, yes. Yes, it does. But I can understand why they wanted to do it when they did it. I, I mean, I, mean I, I get both sides of this. I get why they wanted to do it. I get the people who didn't like it. Um, more annoyed... I, sorry. I'm going to now start with a, uh, with a pronoun. I'm <laughs> more annoyed by the fact that there are now so many of them that you no longer can say pre or post crisis because now you have to ask what crisis are we talking about and 52 is nearly a crisis I mean I mean flashpoint could have been called a flashpoint crisis or something ridiculous like that because it pretty much is a crisis civil crisis point happened and uh, <laughs> it was a huge huge event it was a huge event <laughs> But uh, oh well, yeah. actually, it was um, it was brightest crisis. I think. Brightest <laughs> crisis. Yes, it's a crisis. This. <laughs> um, I don't know, but but I, I guess it depends on whether or not you're a uh, half is a glass is half empty or half full kind of guy. <laughs> whether or not it was a it, it was it was a blackest crisis or a brightest crisis. Really, <laughs> <laughs> glass is half convoluted. <laughs> so so anyway, um, let, I tried to convolute some sugar and some water the other day, and it worked. Okay. Uh, it, <laughs> let, let's let's focus again, or we're gonna have to retcon this podcast. I <laughs> uh, so so, so I. You said that part of your problem with it is that it's is that they're keeping certain things and they're starting other certain things over. What what they what they made a big deal out of when they announced this was that it was going to be not simply good jumping on points, but anyone could start with anything yeah. because they needed no prior knowledge. That is not altogether true. Yeah, I mean, maybe you don't need prior knowledge. Maybe what they're saying is that we're going to spoon feed it to you. Maybe they're saying that. As that's our... not what they said, though. Well, you see what I'm saying? But but that's not what they said. Yeah. And that and that, and that's different. Here's my question to you, Vince. Um, would you be ha- because I, I some people are saying this and some people aren't. Would you have been happier if it was a real, honest to God, start from scratch relaunch? Yeah. Me too. I would have. I mean, the problem with it is is that there are too many reasons to not care about certain things that are happening in these books. 
because uh, these characters existed beforehand, and they're saying you have to have read the continuity that came beforehand to care what's happening in these number ones. At the same time as they're touting it out as if that's not what, what you, as if you don't need that. Yeah. Now, I, now, here's what frustrates me about it. I think certain books that's true of, and certain ones it's not. Yeah. I, I, really, and I think the better ones seem to be the ones where you really could not only be new to a book, but be new to comic books. And I really, really want to stress that, because mm-hmm. I think that I think that part of DC's mantra with this has been, we want to bring new people, not into DC comics, but into comic books. Yeah. People who have never been interested in comics will now read comics, because our books don't say number 850 anymore. Mm-hmm. And they know it's starting over completely, but 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 some but some of them are not. So I would say um, I would say Action Comics is a good example of a book that you need no prior knowledge to read. Uh, I would say yeah. that it's somewhat more enjoyable if you at least know basic stuff about Superman because there are references. Yeah, I mean, if you're new to comics, I'd recommend picking up both Action Comics and Superman, but read Superman first. <laughs> read Superman first. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's a good point. They weren't they weren't published that way, but I, I get I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean the reason is is that that Superman is such an, an arrogant brat in Action Comics number one that uh, if you re- if you think that's where he's going or if that's how he's going to be, then uh, why would you really want to keep reading comic books, let you, alone Action you, Comics? You, you may not, and especially if. Your all you know about Superman is the whole truth, justice, is American way thing. You get mm-hmm. to it and 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 you feel like, oh wait a minute, it's Frank Miller Superman. What? <laughs> uh, something. Well, actually, I think Frank Miller Superman would be. Look at me, I'm stupid because I'm Superman. <laughs> yeah, yes, but well, Superman if he was <laughs> Frank Miller's Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Look, kind of. he's red. He's not Batman. But we already have that in Justice League, so. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, so let's run this down a little bit. Uh, we, we already mentioned a couple books that you don't need uh, really anything to, 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 really, to really appreciate. I'm going to put Aquaman on that list. Yeah. I mean, the thing about Aquaman is I feel like if you've been part of uh, knowing that comics exist, mm-hmm. and you've been part of knowing what Aquaman is, is generally, then, uh, then I think you'll enjoy Aquaman. I mean, because there is history beforehand. That's fine. You don't need an origin story for everybody. And I, I really no, and I'm glad that they're not. Yeah, and I'm glad that they're not doing that. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Jeff Johns is, is is very intelligently giving us everything we need to know about that character without having to do an origin story. I mean, Static Shock is much the same way, where there is stuff that's prior to that, but you don't necessarily need to have read earlier Static to understand it. I think oddly, one of the uh, best jump on books is Supergirl. Yeah. Supergirl is straight from the start of Supergirl. I mean, and the reason, it, well, the big reason for me is because not only does it start from scratch, but she also doesn't know anything either. So you're learning everything along with her. You know, the interesting thing about Super, or the most interesting thing about Supergirl for me was uh, she's getting all of her powers at once in this first issue, and uh, she finds her super hearing, and she hears things that are happening in other books. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. And uh, I read some of these things kind of out of order of the way they came out. Right. And I was reading, I'm like, oh man, that was in Nightwing. That just happened. I'm like, oh, there's that one from Detective. That's neat. That's neat and, and subtle and not in, and not necessary that you caught it. But if you did, you're like, oh, cool. And uh, I don't actually know that they had one from Detective, but they definitely had one from, uh, from, from Nightwing? Nightwing. Wow. It was cool. really cool. And uh, I mean, I highly recommend Supergirl just for the fun of it, but... There wasn't a lot that happened in Supergirl. So, books that you really need prior knowledge and they seem to have missed the memo that they are 52 books. Yeah, Batwoman? Batwoman, totally. Yeah, yeah. we mentioned that on our, on our GNN. Uh, other, other ones, I think, really, almost all the Bat books are that way. Yeah. Um, I, now, now, I will say that Batman is pretty readable by itself, but I think it's... You said you were somewhat let down by it. I think it's more enjoyable if you know Snyder stuff and if you know recent Batman. Uh, then Batman and Robin, of course, completely. You, you, ha- you, have, you have to know Grant Morrison stuff. I didn't read that one because I, I don't like Damian I didn't like Wayne. it. Yeah, I don't either. And I, <laughs> and I didn't like it, and I thought it was... Um, I, I, I thought... There were, I, won't, I won't go into it, but there, there, were, there was a place where it... it it contradicted itself in one issue, and it bothered me. And I just I thought it was sloppily written, and I am so, I'm sorry about that, but I didn't care for it. So. You know what I would like to happen? What's that? Damian Wayne stop sympathizing with Bruce Wayne at all and become not Robin. 
Yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah. No, that'd be all right. You know, I wouldn't mind Damian Wayne just disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, I know a lot of people like him, and I don't want to touch, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I don't, I don't get it. I don't care. I don't care for him. Uh, that kind of angst is not my bag. And You can't wear that bright of a color and be that angry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's, so speaking of Red Hood and the Outlaws, <laughs> um, did you read that book? Uh, no, mainly, here's the, here's the deal. All right. I wanted to read Red Hood and the Outlaws because I've read some Ghostbusters written by Lobdell and I thought, uh, it would be interesting, but then I read Superboy and it was written by Lobdell. And you didn't like it. It was awful. <laughs> Like, it was so boring, and I knew exactly what was coming. And I'll say this, and uh, maybe I'm the only person that this bothers, but uh, these people created this creature. Things like MRIs and whatnot exist, so you can see inside of people generally, and uh, they don't know what is inside of Superboy. And they keep saying, he's showing no brain activity, and Superboy keeps saying, oh, I'm, uh," or what's he trying to say? He says... My thoughts Danger are... Danger Will Robinson? <laughs> Sorry, Vince was waving his arms in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. But, so, uh, so Superboy keeps saying that his, his thoughts are spread throughout his body. Well, that would mean that he needs nervous tissue throughout all of his body. How do they not scan this guy and know anything? They keep saying they know nothing about him. How did you create him? You have this massive technology to create this creature, but you can't look inside of him? You, no x-rays exist? You... What do you mean you can't do this? Well, you know all scientists have no common sense, right? You yeah. realize Well, anyway. Uh, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't read that one. Uh, I, me- I, me- I meant to, and I just missed it. It's, it's not a book that makes no sense. It's a book that makes no effort to make sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, okay, we're just going to... He's Superboy. He's created by scientists, and our scientists are going to be annoying. And that's about as much as they thought it through. <laughs> uh, here's the thing with Red Hood and the Outlaws. I actually liked it a lot better than I thought I was going to. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, I did, and I liked uh, Jason Todd's characterization a lot. And I expected it to be a super dark book, and it really wasn't. And I was kind of surprised. I, I don't know. This is going to sound hypocritical of me because I don't like Etrigan. Oh yeah, and and so I I didn't read Demon Knights because I just don't care for Etrigan. And the reason I don't like Etrigan, and I know this has nothing to do with Red Hood, but you, you'll, I thought you'll you were understand. Say Etrigan was in it. You'll <laughs> understand in a second what I, why I'm saying this. Um, here's the thing. I I'm getting ahead of myself. I apologize. Here's the thing with Etrigan. Um, he the reason I never cared for him is because I've always seen him associated with Batman and. Batman and a bunch of supernatural demon stuff never really meshed with me that well. Um, like, like, really, Razagul and the Lazarus Pit is about as far as I as I want to go with that with that with that kind of uh, mythos with, super, with with Batman. And I kind of tune out when I get stuff like uh, you know supernatural demons associated with Batman. Well, then you go to Red Hood and the Outlaws, and it's a book that definitely has a lot of that kind of supernatural stuff going on. Um, it's much more of a cosmic book than I would expect. It's Red Hood. And it yeah. worked for some reason. Yeah, I was really surprised by that. Um, and, and well, and Starfire's in it. And of course, you know, Starfire's an alien from another place. And 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 uh, you know, and, and it's and it's Red Hood. It was just this really interesting mix. So here's the thing: a lot of people don't like it because uh, Starfire is overly sexualized. Well, and, that's a theme in all of the women books. Yes, and I want to talk about that, which is the reason I, I decided to mention it now. Um, and it didn't bother me that much because I, I guess I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of used to that sort of thing sometimes. And kind of, it's sad. I mean, I like, like I know that's awful. Um, and it's not that it doesn't turn me off. It's just that I, I kind of, I go, okay, if that's there. What else is in this book? You know, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And Starfire is not a character that I knew prior to that book, so it didn't, it didn't bug me like it would with somebody that I already had an appreciation for. And then I heard a lot of people complaining about it, and I, and I was like, okay, maybe that was was pretty bad, especially because so many of these books are doing that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I mean, here's the thing: with not only is is she, um, you know, drawn like this ultra sexual creature? But, um, but, but she's got this whole, and it's played up for laughs, and in places it's kind of funny. But she's got this whole thing where it's like, um, you know, I, I'm so much more above humans that I don't even remember which men I've slept with because I just don't, I can't tell the difference between humans. They all look the same to me, um, and I'll have sex with anyone because I don't care, and it's it's just fun, and I'll do it, and I don't know who you are, and after we have sex, I won't remember that I had sex with you, and it was just, I don't know, it was weird. Uh, I don't even know how that, to describe it. That's a lot like saying that Starfire is a, a, just a big pot of STDs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 
Oh, well... Look out, Nightwing. Well, 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 well anyway. Um, the, the other thing I, I, I want to throw out really quick uh, is just that I, I, I wanted to share this amusing anecdote with, with, <laughs> with, with our listeners. Uh, the other day, Vince and I were, were, uh, were, were discussing the 52 over the phone, and uh, I mentioned... Um, I mentioned Red Hood, and um, if I remember right, one of us accidentally called her Firestar. Yeah. And I don't remember if it was you or me, but one, and, and, and it was about five minutes before we went, wait a minute, she's not Firestar, she's Starfire. And then I was like, oh, so the book is Red Hood and his amazing friends. <laughs> well, what's funny is I had that thought, I was like, Red Hood and the, what? I could remember it. All <laughs> and, I could think of is Spider-Man and, and his amazing and his, friends. And Red Hood and his amazing friends. I think if it had been called that, it would be a better book. I don't know, maybe, no, maybe you not, know, maybe not. I think that uh, Lobdell's strength. I've read some of his early comedic stuff, and uh, it's not very good. It's very scatterbrained, and but uh, he's he's done some more recent stuff that's it's, that's comedic, and it's very witty. And I, that's well, if he was I writing wondered. Ghostbusters, it would have to be funny. Yeah. I believe it was Ghostbusters okay. that he was writing. I yeah. could be wrong about that, but I'll look it up later, and you guys will be like, "Wow, you didn't say it on this <clears throat> podcast." Anyway, so how do you feel about the way they're treating women in the in in the relaunch? I'm. I'm slightly annoyed by it. Like, uh, even some of the stronger female characterizations are all hypersexualized, and I feel like a woman's strength is not necessarily based on her sexuality. Uh, once again, this was a conversation Manos and I had the other night, and, he, and, and, and again, he made a terrific point. Um, I, I guess I'll just uh, be Manos this podcast. Um, no, <laughs> Man- if I remember right, it, it, was, it was Manos who made this point where, where, where he said, DC has decided they have no female readers. Yeah. They, they, they just, they, they've, they've counted them out. It's maybe not even so much that they're being sexist as they're just, and maybe they are, but, but, but I'm just saying, like, like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to jump the gun and just, and just accuse them of things. Um, it feels like a marketing thing. It's like, it's like we're, and they, and they can, and they have come out, if I, if, if I'm, if I'm correct, and said, we are aiming at this particular demographic. You know, the, the magical, like. the magical, but not just that it feels like it, but that they've said this, that their magical number, their, their, their magical demographic. Graphic is males twenty five to thirty three five seven. You know, I think a book that is very indicative of this is Wonder Woman. Did you read Wonder Woman? I have not read Wonder Woman yet. It wasn't bad. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, Mano said it was great. But uh, the thing about Wonder Woman, there's two things that I want to touch on with Wonder Woman, right. and maybe we can get to the other one later. But uh, her suit is not necessarily designed to look hypersexualized. I mean, they even uh, downplay the, uh, the the hyper form to her her breasts. Yeah, which is okay. You know, it it, it puts the focus somewhere else on the brutality, incidentally. Yeah, yeah. I did see some panels. It looked like a pretty violent book. I, I can't tell whether or not it's going to be good or if it's going to be violent. I'm tell. pretty sure by issue six they're going to have a crossover with Conan. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good point. But it looked the, like a Conan book to me. There was a lot of violence. Am I wrong? There's a lot of severed things in there. Yes. But uh, they, oh 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 oh! So it's gonna be uh, so it's gonna be Wonder Woman, Conan, and Violator. Okay. <laughs> but uh, in contrast to the new uh, suit or the the newish suit that they have, the new design, she starts off the first time you see Wonder Woman in this book, she's nude, and uh, you don't see her completely naked. She's of course yeah. covered by a uh, naturally, yeah, natural. She's she's all natural, ah, naturally natural, and uh, she's covered by you know blankets, and then she's you know you see her from the back. And I'm like, why? Why is she naked right now? There is no reason to have her naked. There's no reason to have this scene in there. Like you could have written it differently. I read a blog that was a father or a mom. I can't remember if it was a, if it was a dad or a mom. I forget. Maybe it was no. Maybe it was a mom who who reads comic books. And I think this is what it was. Who was at any rate? It, it was yeah. someone complaining that they weren't able to read the new Wonder Woman with their nine-year-old daughter. That's something I wanted to... Uh, that's that's exactly where this is going now. Wonder Woman, you hear the name Wonder Woman, and what are you going to think? Something that's a little more family-friendly. And I understand that in her past she's an Amazon, so they're trying to deal with this whole uh, Amazonian uh, Greek mytho- mythology, mythology thing. <laughs> that's not a word. But... Uh, <laughs> no, that's the theme for this podcast. It's Okay. But uh, just remember that some sentences begin with pronouns. You know, uh, Wonder Woman and her Greek mythology and Awkward Man. <laughs> awkward Man. Uh, Wonder Woman and her amazing friends. But uh, Hermes was in the book, incidentally. Really? Yeah. All right. A really inter- interesting design for him. Yeah. But uh, there's so much brutality. And if you pick up Wonder Woman, you're going to expect to see something different than what you get. And you get... They're trying to make her into an Amazonian soldier, which, fair enough, I guess... But it's not what you're going to expect. It is very adult. 
Oh, my goodness. I, I wouldn't let my kid read it. I mean, if you were a teenager, sure. I think name, this is like teens and up. Name but... one book. This will be fun. <laughs> name one book in the 52 that you would let your kid read if you had a kid. Uh, Hawk and Dove. I didn't read Hawk and Dove. It wasn't good. Well, I don't like Hawk and Dove, so I didn't read Hawk and Dove. Um, <laughs> and the same reason I didn't read Savage Hawkman, just to care what I, 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 I don't really care for. Um, I, will, I will go on record to say that I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I did not read every issue in the 52. Uh, I read a lot of it. I did not read everything. I want to read Savage Hawkman. I didn't get the chance, but... Uh... Hawk and Dove was really boring, and it was very, it was very like early '90s comic book style to me, and it oh, doesn't appeal to me. Maybe I'll read it. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna like. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. It was. It's one of those things where maybe like, if it was a side-scrolling beat 'em up. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would play it. I wouldn't mind playing Hawk and Dove the game. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> but it was. You have two characters to choose from, then. <laughs> Just like separation anxiety for all of our uh, viewers, 15 years and under. I'm sorry. <laughs> you probably don't get that reference. Yeah, did you like Separation Anxiety? Because I much prefer Maximum Carnage. Uh, I like Spider... When I played Maximum Carnage, I chose Spider-Man anyway. No, 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 I mean, so. just just did you like that game? I liked them both. Oh, okay. Because I, I just didn't think it was nearly as good. Well. Sorry. Moving right along. <laughs> but, uh... We're visiting our eight-year-old selves. Okay, go ahead. Oh, 52. <laughs> Um, but, 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 yeah, so, but, but, but other, but other, uh, 52, the arcade game. So other, uh, books that you would, that you would let a kid read. Aquaman, I I think, is, is readable. Aquaman is solid. I mean, I think, uh, it's, it's totally worthy of an adult. Mm-hmm. But, uh, oh sure, yeah, absolutely. I don't but, feel like I'm just of is worthy of books that are books that are not too violent, books that are not too languagey. Uh, Superman's okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Superman. Not action. No. Definitely not action. Uh, he he's he's in an electric chair. The second issue, definitely not action. Uh, and I'm not sure about any of the back books. They're pretty violent this time around. Yeah. Uh, even I mean even uh, Batman Dark Knight, uh, which I which by the way did not care for. Uh, yeah. Won't won't talk about it too much here. But did you read that? Yeah. Didn't work didn't for like me, it. man. I mean, the big reason to read it is the last panel. And if I tell you what that is, then there's no reason to read the book. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. So see if anybody put a screenshot on the net and you're done. But I feel uh, like a lot of it is a, a love note. Screenshot. To... I, I mean, I meant panel. <laughs> Go ahead. I feel like a lot of it is a love note to the the style that Frank Miller did Batman. And I don't feel like uh, when you're writing Batman, especially if you're doing a relaunch, that you should be trying to entirely emulate one writer that came before. I mean, I think we should be allowed to carve out our own things if we're creators. I mean, why not? So they've. So I guess the point that we're making here is that they, with 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 this with this part of this of the discussion is they put themselves in the in a box and said that. Um, and, and and I, I mean I, I don't want to um, touch again step on anybody's toes when I say this, but but tell me if I'm wrong about this. It feels like they think that the majority of their comic DC, I mean, that the majority of their comic book readers are white males, twenty five to thirty to thirty three. That's that's true. I mean, and that's what it is, really. The majority of the readers is that demographic. Yeah, but why not reach to a larger base, especially when you're doing digital? I mean, part of the point of, of, of the relaunch was also to do day and day digital. They're trying to reach to a broader audience. Why not make some things that are more appealing to that broader audience? And, I, and, and see, here's the thing. They think, or at least they're saying, you know, you know, you know that, that they that, that they're being um, that they're being diverse because they have several books that feature characters who are not white guys. Okay, but they're all black guys. It's all male. It's one hundred percent the male audience. With the ex- uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and they're mostly all male. Not all of them. You got Birds of Prey. You got Wonder Woman. But um, but they but those books don't feel like they're they, they're really trying to appeal to a female. I'm not saying they should be chick books. Like I'm not saying that. I, I'm I'm just saying that they sure. Okay, when you got Wonder Woman nude on the first page. Well, wow. that's for that's for guys, right? You see yeah. what I'm saying? Um, when every you got, female, every woman when you got Catwoman jumping out a window, half dressed, that's for the guys. Yeah, they're they're trying to sell it on sex, and they know what woman is going to look at that. Well, you know, obviously, what kind of woman is going to look at that? But still, the ones reading that woman. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's funny. I'm, I'm sorry. Should I not have said that? Was no, that I a like little it. not PC enough for this show? Maybe not, but I don't care. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. that's that's a Vince. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Let, let me let me amend that. I'm sorry because because Batwoman is a, is a, is, a, is a solid title and 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 anybody can. I, I, I guess what I really mean, Vince, are the kind of books that Batwoman herself would read. Um, <laughs> no, that's the thing is that Batwoman even has them naked in it. I mean, yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. I don't understand why we have to feature 
entirely or entirely or at least partially nude women in every female book. Yeah, and also this is getting a little bit too much into the psychology of it, but let, let's be real for a moment. It, there, that's all going for the readers they already have. And we've seen that a million times already. Like, we need something new, you know, you know, you know, you know, yeah. to keep... I mean, even even those guys, even the guys who, if there are such people, who <laughs> just buy comic books because of, um, be, because of super attractive women, which I don't no. think happen. No, I don't, they do. They yeah, exist. They're not they buying exist. those books, though. They're not buying DC books, right? I used are to, they? I used to shop really? at a comic store, and there was a guy there that would come in, and he was creepy, and every day he'd say, oh... Did you see this? Uh, I think it was called Gold Digger, some anime book. Well, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, but I'm just saying, but but but, are, is he buying DC books for the hot chicks on the covers? Like, well, he was buying other stuff than just anime, so I'm going to assume that that's his. Okay, name. well, I'm just trying to assume <laughs> higher standards for, for for people, Vince, because because here's the thing. Okay, there are a large amount of women who like comic books, yeah, and there's nothing for them. In fact, if and you that's look ridiculous. In... And again, I'm not saying we need to write chick books. I'm saying we need to write things that appeal to, to just people on mass, and there aren't. Just trying to be marketed toward a particular kind of person. And I think that the big reason why this is a problem is, uh, like, we see elements of this in all of the books, but uh, the big offender is Catwoman because there's nothing in that other than really sex and brutality. I mean, uh, okay. It, that, yeah. That's my assessment, is that most of it is a based on sexuality. I mean, she spends time pretending to be a hooker again, and just she spends time half nude. And, <laughs> she, and on the, the last page, if that's not sex, what is it? I and then and then and then going back to the uh to, to to the to the other side of this, I don't think that we need to have a tally of how many of our characters are of a certain gender and a certain sex, right? I mean, yeah. I, sorry, 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 those would be the same thing. Um, uh, uh, that 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 are, that are of, of of certain genders and of certain races, right? Mm -hmm. Um. It just seems like it just seems like they're they're tallying it up, and they're like, well, as long as we have enough black guys on covers, we're, we, we, we we won't we won't get played we we won't get in trouble for 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 being you know you know for 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 not being diverse enough. Well, that's ridiculous. It Why does seem like they pulled out some really obscure characters to make that happen. Just to make that happen, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, okay, well, you can either invent some new characters or pull, I mean, here's the here's the, the 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 reality of it is if you're gonna make all books based on characters that already exist, even if they're obscure ones, for the most part, you're going to have... They're, they're going to be white people. You know, I, mean, I, mean, the, I mean, the majority of them are going to be Caucasian people. Um, well, that's because the majority of characters are that way, so it's just that's the way we're, it is. We're in the, we're in the first place. So, I mean, like... You know, so so the so the question, and we don't have to talk about this, but the question then becomes: A, um, how how do you combat that? And B, how important is it that we combat that? And I don't know. I mean, um, we're also a couple of white guys, so what do we know, <laughs> right? But but but, but I'm really... saying that, that it, I don't like that they're drawing attention to it. That's my yeah. point. The, the 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 problem is that they're drawing attention to it. I really wanted a steel book. I wanted a steel book too. I really wanted a. I know this sounds weird, and this is an obscure character, but I wanted a Black Lightning book. Yeah. I, the way he was used in uh, Judgment well, of Outsiders. Fair. He's had his own book before. Black Lightning was a really interesting guy, especially as the idea of a, uh, as a superhero who was also the father of a superhero. Dude, Black Lightning is way less obscure than Batwing. Yeah. Who? Well, who's a new character, so I guess you can't call him obscure. But uh, but uh, here's the thing. Um, the coolest African American character in DC didn't get a book. Yeah, Steel. I mean, at least we know now that he exists in this universe. We did get a mention of him in Superman, so or, or in I think Action Two, so at least that's good. But yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. Then there's he, talk about irons. Yeah, that's right. And there's talk about a steel suit. It, so I think he's being set up, and he's and he at least exists in this universe. So that's good. But I, I think that the, I was worried they were going to write him out. I think there's nothing that exists prior to the reboot that uh, can say that it doesn't officially exist in this universe because I think that they're going to pull it out anyway if they want it. I'm glad they they're doing a Huntress mini. Oh yeah, yeah. That okay. just started this week because I was kind of like, uh, is there hundred? Although I've heard, I don't know if this is true or not. I've heard some talk that um, these these minis aren't actually in fifty two continuity and stuff. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's very. What's the point? I know. I know. I know. I know. It's really confused. There, were, I heard some talk about Earth two. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not up and up on it. You know, I was gonna say this earlier, uh, and I think we anyway. sort of intimated on it. But, yeah. But uh, the big problem with what they're doing is that uh, all of these varying different crises that they tried to create was to fix the problems that 
they're creating by making continuity that doesn't mesh with its own continuity. Are you confused? I'm confused, and the point of this was to bring new readers on. You know, it doesn't bother me that they want to have a continuity that's not necessarily linked into itself. I don't care. No, that's not, I'm, just, I'm just talking about 52 itself. No, you're and right. And how I don't know what's continuous and, and what's not. When when Superman shows up in Swamp Thing, and as by by all by all counts that we can tell, all of his history has been erased, and he mentions he's been dead before. I'm confused. Yeah. When you have Batman. And and uh, presumably his entire history has somehow happened in five years. I'm still confused about this and about how much happened before Justice League and all that. I'm not going to get into it, but we know that um, Damian Wayne happened, and we know that Batman Inc. happened, and we know that all this stuff this stuff happened. And then you get to Catwoman, and he and Bruce Wayne don't know that each other, or, or he, he and Bruce, yeah, he and Batman and Bruce Wayne <laughs> don't know who each other are, and Bruce Wayne and and, uh, and Selena Kyle don't know who each other are. Um, I'm confused. And I mean, again, I think that book, I, I mentioned this earlier, I think that book might be um, taking place earlier, but I'm speculating about that, and I just don't know what I'm supposed to remember, what I'm not supposed to remember, and I don't feel like working that hard. I just want to read good <laughs> stories. That, that, that's the point, um, it, ultimately, is that the thing that frustrates me the most, I would be less frustrated if more of it was bad. Mm -hmm. Because at well, least, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel uh, like because the majority of, it, of it's mediocre. Yeah, but some of it's quite good. Some some of it is very good, but 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 you're you're right. There 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 is there is quite a bit of mediocre in this, and there is a lot of danger of 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 starting over just so we can retell some of the same stories we've told before. That's that's a point Manos brought up when we talked about it, and I think he's right. And that's a well, if you Superboy is exactly that. They're telling the exact same Superboy story. I mean, if you've watched Young Justice, the the TV series, the pilot is exactly what uh, Superboy one is about. Oh, and uh, in fact, they end with it basically saying that they're going to bleed into it. So it's, it's yeah. well, and not even just mythos stuff, but just simply like, like you know, you know, if if we start over, we can just do the same kinds of plots we've done before. Yeah, I, I really feel like that's what they're trying to do. That's like, definitely uh, what's happened with Catwoman. That's, I'm sorry, we've been here before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, th those are, those are characters where I don't feel like there's there's anywhere else to take them besides they know who each other are and they're trying to make a relationship work. I don't. I, th this whole, this whole, you know, we're we're sleeping with each other with our masks on and stuff. I'm sorry, but like we've, I mean, it's never been the sexualized, but we've been here before. I want to say in, at least the, thematically, as far as that is concerned with continuity, I don't feel like the the Batman that is in uh, in uh, Catwoman is the same Batman that's in any of the other Bat books. I feel okay. like that's a different guy. Interesting. No, I know I'm not saying it's not Bruce Wayne. It is Bruce Wayne, but it's not the same characterization for Batman. It's robot Bruce Wayne. He's, it's, it's he, yeah, he came robot in from, Bruce. He he came in from uh, Frank Miller continuity and uh, <laughs> Oh no. Robot man. <laughs> robot. I, I I I know we're running over time, but I got to ask you this real quick. Um people have criticized Justice League for having a, too much of a Frank Miller type Batman. What's your take on that? I feel like uh it had to be done right eventually. <laughs> I just think that's so interesting. I, I thought you would close it after the second page when he's acting too much like the the All Star version. Well, that's the thing is that he's he's not uh, he's not I'm the GD Batman. Right. He's uh, he's hey I'm overconfident and you know what I'm okay with that. You don't some you don't think you don't think he'd go um, kidnap a circus boy and turn him into Robin. And... Here's here's my point with All Star Batman and Robin. That was a a storyline that was worth telling. He didn't tell it anywhere near correctly. That Batman is worth having in a universe where he's not the protagonist. Yeah, but I don't want to see him in mainline continuity. See, I don't. I'm just saying I don't want him to be the main Batman. And the and, and again and, and maybe, maybe I'm old fashioned. Maybe I'm maybe I'm turning into an old person. <laughs> maybe at 27 I'm turning into an old person. But um, here here's here's the crux of it for me, Vince. Um. It's not f some of uh, some of this not fun enough. I um, want comics kids can read again, and I mean like again maybe I'm in the minority on this, but it, it, it bugs me that there's not at least a few more issue, a few more books than there, than there are that not geared toward kids, but just that parents don't have to shield their kids from. Yeah. And like like do, do you do you really? If if we were to get a new here's the thing if we're gonna try to get new readers into comic books why aren't we aiming them at another generation and why not 
Um, and, and why would we, and it, since it's obvious that they're not doing that, that's why this is, but I'm just saying if it were me, I wouldn't create a universe where um, people are so standoffish and uh, about, about superheroes and unsure of them, where it's so ultra-realistic that, you know, you know uh, uh, everybody is afraid of superheroes, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's too pessimistic. Yeah. You know, for, I think, for the whole universe to be this way, tell those kinds of stories, but I don't want that to be the foundation. Again, this is this is this is just me me personally. I I, I realize that I'm not going to be in the in the majority on this. All right, that's just that's just yeah. me. But look, I've got a I've got a one and a half year old kid, and I want to bring him up with comic books. And as it is right now, um, I'm not going to be able to bring him up with very much current. He's going to be stuck reading um, kid tie-in books to TV shows. Well, I'll tell that's you what's what we've necessary. Got. What's necessary for this is that uh, they need to have a universal comic book rating system. We don't need one person. Or we don't. We don't need a group of people that are going to rate all comic books. That'd be ridiculous. But uh, we need to have their own police forcing. Wouldn't help. Well, I'm saying it would make them think about like, well, we're going to chop off a guy's head. Was that be appropriate for a younger reader? No. When you realize that all of your books are teen and adult rated, yeah, you're you're right about that. But it wouldn't. It wouldn't get us more books that are more all age books. It would just simply have all the books that we do have say teen and mature on them. That's what ha- that's what's happened with the majority of video games. Well, I think that uh, it would get them to think about more, and I think we might have a few more titles. I mean, granted, it wouldn't be geared towards children, but do you, do you agree with me that you'd like to see more books that just appeal to more people? Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily need it to be more. Uh, more appropriate for all ages across the board. No, but and let that's me not what you're you. saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. Do you buy a book because people's heads get chopped off? No. Do you buy a book because people swear in the book? No. So those things are okay with you in a book if it in if if it uh, doesn't detract from the storyline or somehow enhances it. Mm-hmm. But you don't need it. It's the difference. So between... why do we have to have it in every book? It's the difference. And between... I'm not saying we do in every book in the Fifty Two. I'm saying that more of them are that way yeah. than I would like. It's the difference between Preacher and The Boys. If you've read either of those things, one has a lot of profanity in it. One is about profanity and disgusting things. So there is a division. There is a line where, like for example, are you writing a good storyline? Does your story involve people's heads getting chopped off and nudity? Okay, that's fine. Are you writing a story about people's heads getting chopped off and being naked? That's not fine. There's no story there. What we need to get rid of is this mentality that for um, that for books to be um, not childish, children can't read them. Yeah, I, mean, I just feel like that's where the mentality is. I mean, I wonder if this is somehow stemming from the uh, this this insecurity that that comic books have, where it's oh, we oh, need I think to be it's like that seriously. in a lot of entertainment right now. I don't think so, that's just comic books. Well, I, mean, I, I think, think we've got that. We've got that kind of across the board. And I'm sorry for being on my soapbox, but it bothers me. <laughs> you know, the thing about uh, these these comic books, the thing about this is they're saying, "Please take us seriously," and they're also saying, uh, "Please be interested in the things that are not based on intellectual enjoyment." What I'm seeing are, I mean, I mean, like I'm not seeing comics that are that have more character and story depth with a bunch of violence and language. I'm seeing a lot of books that, forgive me, are um, kind of formulaic and plots I've seen and, and stuff I've seen before, and have violence and language in them. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I just don't under I, I don't understand why that stuff is necessary. Another book I would give to a kid, Mr. Terrific. Yeah, I didn't. Read but it. it's not good. Yeah, I mean, let's think. Hawk and Dove and Mr. Terrific are very, very mediocre. There's nothing about them that stands out. It's basically punch the bad guy in the face and good guys win. Now, having said all of that. I do like the fact, and, and I, we'll just touch on this real quick, and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't mention this earlier, because this was actually a big point that I figured you wanted to make, um, but let me ask you what you think about this. I do like the fact that um, that in the 52 there are all, there there is a, well, they are very diverse in the sense that they're not all superhero books. I, I, I do I do like the fact that, 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 they're, that they're attempting within within a continuity to have a bunch of different genres of books, and that, that's, that's neat. Um, mm-hmm. you, you know, we, we have a, and a lot of uh, horror books. Yeah, horror. 
um, or at least uh, books that stem from horror ideas. Uh, you know, you got you got Frankenstein, and you've got oh, um, yeah. yeah, you know, which was actually quite good. Uh, I read that and I liked it. I read the first couple of pages before uh, before you got here, but I didn't finish it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, but 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 it's but but it's cool. Uh, but, but I mean, you got Frankenstein, you got Swamp Thing, you got I mean, you, you got books that are not necessarily horror books, but rooted in 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 uh, mm-hmm. in that genre. Um, and then uh, you you got All Star Western now, and I mean, yeah. you, you know, you know, not not everything's a superhero book now, and that's kind of cool. Yeah, you know, the thing about it is is they're all somehow attached to a superhero universe, which is, yeah. I suppose, okay. I mean, Swamp Thing, the big, big appearance wasn't even about Swamp Thing, it was about Superman. Yeah, but you know they wouldn't sell as well if they were all discontinuous things. That's and what's fair. the point of publishing them there and not Vertigo? You know, when I was reading, uh, I mean, the thing that turned me off a little bit to that was when I, I read uh, Swamp Thing and it had Superman being a major part of it, and then I read... Uh, Men of War, and there's a, a superhero, or at least somebody who's flying around that I presume is a superhero. Really? And uh, it's that's one of the big things. That, that is the the event that happens in the first issue of Men of War. I'm and just not interested in Even All-Star Western is tied into, you know, superhero um, um, stuff, it, it, just in that it's set in old-school Gotham. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, I'm sorry, old-school, in, in, in Western Gotham. But read it, because it's cool. Which, I did read it, and it is good. Did you like it? But... Uh, I thought it was neat. And I think that, that uh, the way that it is connected to Batman is fair. Why not? Yeah. That 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 is not a... Did you read Gates of Gotham? Uh, no. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I, I really like how it's connected to Gates of Gotham. Because all the stuff about early Western Gotham was set up there. Um, oh. Snyder, Snyder came up with the, 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 the five families of Gotham. And that's where we got Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Cobblepot and stuff like that. Which they use in that. And I just think it's neat that that's all... Again, connected to prior continuity. Prior continuity, yeah. But but again, apparently Batman's all fair game, so... Yeah, you know, the thing about Batman is that I don't feel like each Batman is the same Batman. I really... It's not just Catwoman. Interesting, yeah. I feel like the... Uh, I don't know, I do think Detective and Batman are pretty close. Uh, Maybe not so much? No? I disagree a bit. All right, all right, all right. But uh, I feel like... Uh, hey, I read him one time, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> but I feel like the Batman that's presented in Batman is very... Uh, he's very stoic, he's very calculating... I feel like the Batman... You do have different writers writing these guys, though, too. I mean, you're always going to have different takes on the characters. Which is fair. But uh, I think there's... That Batman in Detective spends more time brooding than he does calculating. I feel like he's very, uh, oh, woe is me, and the city is awful, and... And I still wish that they had left Snyder on Detective, because that title makes more sense for the story he's telling. Yeah. Um, re- really, I, I just... I feel like... I feel like the only reason they moved him was because they moved everybody else, and there's not one person uh, writing or drawing what they were writing or drawing before the relaunch, with almost the exception of, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who the guy who's drawing and writing Flash. Why can't I think of his name right now? Well, you know who I'm talking about. That guy. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, it'll. Wow. That's awful. I, I apologize. I can't believe I can't uh, remember. Jimmy that, Dean. But, well. Well. Anyway. Um, but, <laughs> but I mean, microwave. he wasn't drawing. He wasn't drawing Flash just before Flash ended. So I guess technically. Right. But yeah. But you know. But you know what I mean. Uh, even. Even still. So I don't know. Um, wow. That's bugging me. Um, well, so I don't know. We're we're really very much out of time. You so just shoot rants real quick. No, we we will. But before before that, let's just get some final thoughts out really quick yeah. because I I feel like this has been kind of a cluster hoo ha, <laughs> um, to, to coin a phrase. So um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> that's that's Vince's phrase yeah. that he says all the time. Um, so Vince, uh, ultimately, you I mean, where are you coming down on it? You said that you thought it was mostly pretty. I generic. Feel, well, not generic. What did you What did you say? I said that most of the books are fairly mediocre. mediocre. We have some ones that stand out. We have some ones that don't. Which are, or we have some ones that stand out as being good. We have some that some that stand out as being bad. Would it have which, been better if we just kept the continuity going the way it was? I think that uh, ideally they should use continuity, but not be bogged down by it. You know, the dark horse method essentially. But uh, I don't know. I, I I feel like they'd hyped it up so much that it would have just been better to go with an like, entirely new continuity and carve out something new. I agree one hundred percent, and I would have really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, what they now here's the thing: what they did was a, a fairly big risk. There was no way to know if this was really going to work out or not, and we still don't entirely know. I mean, you know, everything sold out and was huge and everything, but how long is it going to last? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, like if too many people like you felt like it was mediocre, their sales are going to majorly drop from last year, and then they're going to be in kind of a bind because they just started everything over. Um, I mean, I suppose maybe we ought to realize that uh, you can't think that uh, just because it's new means it's going to be good. No, that's that's absolutely yeah. true. But I, I guess I am praising them to a point for for ta- for taking a risk. 
I just wish that they had gone a lot farther with it. Yeah. I I wanted a complete cut from prior, prior continuity. And and I and I and I do still wish that they would just open open themselves up a little bit and recognize that they have more even if they don't have these readers they have more potential readers than just the demographic they're aiming at and DC was always known between the two publishers as 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 the as the publisher that knew how to treat women and I mean I mean it had to how to tell good female characters and I'm feeling I feel like they're losing that um, I'm not trying to take a giant feminist stance I'm just saying that it's a, it's obnoxious you know come to think of it Batwoman or yep. Bat Batgirl rather. Oh, not hypersexualized. We didn't, we didn't even talk about that. No, she's not. No. Um, but she was also... I felt like it was a very stereotype, stereotype storyline. It's also the only one being written by a woman. Yeah. I mean, I feel like she could have made some stronger choices. That's that's what I think. I mean, it's not necessarily wholesale bad. It's just not interesting. It's stuff that I've seen before. It's old hat. Well, it sounds like we we pretty much agree. There's also there's also one thing that we can both completely and utterly agree on. We do not care about Firestorm. I forgot they even made. Did you? <laughs> Would you have read it if you'd known? Uh, I'd have given it a shot. Oh, you okay? All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. I, I thought I at some point I heard you say I don't care about Firestorm. <laughs> you, know, you know, I've read some prior Firestorm stuff. Really? In a t- well, in a team book. I right, thought I was okay. making a great joke too. Oh. <laughs> Well, there's one thing we can agree on. What's Aquaman that? Aquaman was great. Aquaman was great! Uh, okay, well... You want to do some, like, uh, our top books real quick? Because we've spent so much time just analyzing and being negative about certain things. Well, we kind of did that on our Geeks Not Nerds, but... Oh, yeah, well... Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I mean, yeah, I mean, Aquaman was great. Aquaman. I like Demon Knights a lot. I mean, if you like... If you like the... If you don't like the way Roy Thomas tells his Conan stories, because you want some of the more grit from Kurt Busiek, it's like a blend of that. It's great. Uh, I loved... I, I love Batman more than you did. Uh, yeah. But I, I have to admit, I'm kind of becoming a Snyder fanboy. I try not to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I well, but 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 I mean, everything he's touching right now, I think it's gold. So what are you gonna do? Although I didn't like Swamp Thing as as much as I thought I would. I liked we'll it more that. than Batman. <laughs> oh well, you're wrong, but that's okay. Uh, no, 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 okay, I'm sorry. Um, and, and I and also I love Greg Capullo, and his art is not exactly what I expected, but it's still really good for that book. Yeah, I like the way he drew everybody but Batman. <laughs> oh, all right, interesting. Uh, he's like his Gordon was great. But yeah. He, I what? Gee, what else did I really like? I, I love Resurrection Man. Uh, once again, that's a thing I I, I I just really like. But I really liked Resurrection Man. Um, Action Comics is great. Action Comics is great. Number two is better than number one. It is. Uh, it's 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 okay. If you weren't, I said this on my on my comic review show. But if you aren't sure about Action reading number one, please give it one more issue. Yeah, I feel like uh, Action Comics two is making up for the, well not making up but really, I feel it's validating like, one yes I mean uh, we have uh, Lex Luthor still being the Lex that makes number one so interesting uh-huh. but then we have uh, I feel like there's going to be a progression we're going to get Superman to a point to, like he's going to learn lessons as this goes by he's going to become more of the Superman from uh, Superman number one mm-hmm. and that's that's what has to happen. I mean, you can't just have some some bratty guy throughout an entire series uh, like like whining or something for ten seasons. Um, no, no, you, no, you can't, and a lot of people will will, will buy it. But uh, that's not the demographic they're aiming at with the relaunch. So, <laughs> so those are it's not exactly the same demographic. It's a I just different. told you the three that I would like to keep buying. You know, Aquaman, Demon Knights, and Action Comics. Okay, all right. But I feel like there's three honorable mentions. I feel like Wonder Woman, Supergirl, and Nightwing could be promising. Um, Nightwing didn't impress me a lot, but it was good. I mean, yeah. it was. You know, I mean, was I feel like fun. these things may be going places. Mm-hmm. I don't. But uh, the reason I say. The previous three is because I know they're going to go bad. Did you read that? I was going to. I almost did, but uh, I hated Superboy enough that I decided not to. Okay, well, he's not even in the first issue, so give it a shot. Uh, okay. it's mostly about Red Robin. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty. I mean, uh, I wanted to I wanted to give it a try because I miss Red Robin, and that was a book I used to read. Uh, but and <laughs> I'm not sure I'll keep reading it because I've just never been a Teen Titans guy. But I mean, it was it was good. It was all right. Yeah. It, it was it was alright. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? One I meant I I forgot to mention. Uh, Justice League Dark, quite good. Oh yeah, oh, I loved I it. Totally you, meant to read that. You one. haven't read that one yet? Not yet. Oh, you need to. I think you'll I think you'll quite enjoy it. Uh, it was it was really it was really neat, and uh, I love seeing. 
what a weird mix of people. It's so cool to see these the, the, these guys. I mean, you've got you've got John Constantine, you've got Madame Xanadu, and you've got Zatanna, and it's just quite the mix. And, and and I'm not a big like dark magic sorcerer guy, but I enjoyed it. It was really cool. And it's also kind of neat. I don't want to give too much away, but it's kind of neat to see the main Justice League um, really get their butts handed to them because of magic and not know what to do with it. And uh, they get attacked by giant mystical teeth. That's all I'm saying. That's that's kind of neat. That's all I'm saying. Giant mystical teeth. I like Weird. it when books give uh, the proper like, due to something that's... Like, for example, I hate it when Superman can take care of everything or Batman can take care of everything. Uh-huh. That annoys me. Because there are, like, magic kicks super... Like, I could see Superman defeating magic He's because he's smart, but uh, when they make it to where these guys can handle absolutely everything, I like it when... I like when they make it to where there is another group that can do this. You know, like a Black Ops team that comes in and handles the stuff that these guys can't. Uh, I'm let's... sorry, that was a little syntax strange. No, that's okay. I forgot what pronouns were earlier. Um, <laughs> before we go to rants, real quick, there's one other thing that we forgot to mention. The the best book in the entire relaunch, we didn't even mention it, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. I... <laughs> We totally, we totally forgot to bring that up, and I just, we, I think we both can agree that even, even better than Aquaman, Ultimate Spider-Man number one is probably the best book in the in the relaunch. You know, I'm I'm waiting to see uh, Ultimate Spider-Man crossover with one of the Bat books. I'm yeah, not, yeah, I'm really, yeah. I'm really certain that DC is going to make that happen. Well, I, I I agree with you that Miles Morales is a little bit different in each of his four books. It's kind of a, <laughs> you know, I also like the work that Miles Morales is doing on Action Comics. Oh right. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's his. That's his twin brother, Rags. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. This. Let's go. To, by the way, for those of you that don't know what sarcasm artist. is, the last forty-five seconds were sarcastic. <laughs> Vince. Yes. Do your rant, sir. Oh, or, right. or, is your rant about comic books? Yes. My rant too is about comic books. How neat is that? It's all comic booky today. <laughs> go ahead. So I was reading a comic book the other day, and right in the middle of it, it had a very sizable chunk of an advertisement. Well, not an advertisement. It was a preview to another book. In the middle. It was, like, d- directly in the middle. And it wasn't just, like, a page and a half or two pages. It was, like, the first half of another book. When I picked this book, I'm like, wow, this is thick. Well, it's thick because it has half of another book on the inside. They did that with Super 8. Yeah, that's that what it was. was that? Oh, was that what it was? They did that with Super 8. And, and not only did they do it in a lot of books, but they there was one week where it was in almost every book I read. I I was, like, because I, when I buy a book, I feel like I have to read all of it. And uh, so I'm sitting there thumbing through this, like, like man, this, this stops the storyline that I was reading entirely, and it was just getting good. And uh, I'm flipping through this. I'm trying to read Super 8, and I said, you know what? Uh, I don't care enough about Super 8 to finish reading this. Why am I reading this? I'm forcing myself to read something I don't care about. So I just flip to the end of it and continue reading my book. And I think I might have actually finished reading it had it been at the end of the book rather than right in the middle. So you have no problem with it if it's at the end of a book? No, it's fine to do uh, previews. Like, in fact... Uh, what was it? See, sometimes if they're really good previews, you feel like you got a little more in your book, too. I mean, they're, that, I don't know. Yeah. Like, they're doing that castle, or I think they're doing it right now in a lot of the Marvel books. Oh, castle? Doing the, the castle previews. Yes. And uh, I read that, didn't like the preview, but uh, I read all of the preview as opposed to the first page and went, you know what, screw this. <laughs> I'm tired of you guys interrupting my book. But there's a difference between an advertisement and uh, something that asks you to read it, because if I have to go back and search for it, I don't care. I don't care if it's only 35 pages well, and it's intrusive. It's like a pop-up ad. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like saying that this advertisement is more important than the thing you're reading. I agree with I'm you. Like, I didn't buy it for the advertisement. I bought it for the the issue that I bought it for. And I think that annoys pretty much everybody. Uh, I've heard a lot of complaints about that. I mean, imagine reading a novel, and then uh, you get to the middle section of the book. You're like 200 pages in, and suddenly you're reading an advertisement for the next Harry Potter book that comes out. And you're like... Well, I'm sitting here reading about uh, people being stabbed to death in the uh, the bonfire of 87 of New York, and uh, now I'm reading Harry Potter, <laughs> which which is kind of the same thing, but it's really <laughs> no, it's it's not. Um, but that's what made Voldemort so scary. It was New York. It's yeah, 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 really. Um, well, yeah, the the New York Voldemort. He's a... <laughs> <laughs> New York Demort. Wow, wow. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'll go and do my rant really quick, Vince. Uh, my rant is very simple. It's about the color red. <laughs> Have I told you about this? Yes, yes. Okay, well, here's the thing. Oh, uh, 
<laughs> they 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 put out if you bought comics this week and 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 uh, and you were either waiting for some of the number number ones uh, for for se- for second printing whatever reason yeah you know like you weren't sure about them and then you decided to get them after you saw reviews or whatever or if you missed them because your stores were sold out now they've got the second the second printing so you bought them you noticed that they're if, if you had seen the the prior covers that the covers are exactly the same they're identical to the uh, first printing covers except that the backgrounds are super red they're like they're like bright burning red in the backgrounds of all of these um it's not a, it's not a terrible way to go uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of neat that that we can t- tell the difference between b- between the first and second printing um in a visible way on the cover i've got no problem with it um what's what's funny and this isn't even, this isn't even a problem it just makes me laugh <laughs> they picked a color that is in the title of two of the books in the relaunch so now, oh, yeah. so now, um, Red Lanterns is really red, and Red Hood and the Outlaws really red, and you could even go as far as say Firestorm really red now. And I just think it's quite funny, like, like because if you didn't know that all the books were doing it, you look at this and be like, wow, they are really making a big deal out of how red these <laughs> these are. It's like it's like um, you can be certain in Red Lanterns, whether it's good or bad, it will be red. <laughs> <laughs> so on the cover of uh, Blue Beetle, they have a red background. There's a red background. Well, and if they blue. did it with everything, now, I think they did it with all of them. I, I can't confirm. That. I said all of them. What I saw was a, was a preview page online that showed twelve of them. I don't know if those are the only twelve. I do know that the red books were there. Um, so, so anyway, uh, the cover of Blue Beetle has a red background with the Blue Beetle turning around, going, "This is counterintuitive." <laughs> Anyway, that's my whole rant. I just thought it was funny. Um, it's more of a "ha ha, why they do that?" kind of rant. That's fair. No, that's I mean, they weird. could have picked they could have picked a lot of other colors that aren't immediately associated with other thing. You know what I mean? Like, why did it have to be red? Or they could have uh, made new covers that didn't involve Photoshop. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it would have taken longer and stuff like that. But anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, I know this. We didn't mean for this to be an hour podcast, but it is. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about my soapbox earlier. Uh, and again, I hope I didn't step on anybody's toes. But I, I, I just, I, I feel kind of, I feel like comics are continuing to be a lot more isolated and uh, and 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 a lot more elitist than they need to be. Uh, like we've always said, Vince, comics mm-hmm. are a medium. And uh, they, they should appeal to a wider, uh, to a, to a broader group of people. Um, you know, we've got an entire, we, we've got a. Well, I don't want to say the whole medium, but sometimes it feels, sometimes it feels like with the two big companies that the whole medium is geared toward one kind of person. And we don't have this with movies. It's a lot of movies geared to different sorts of people. Yeah. I, I guess I guess we kind of do with advertising some, but I, you, well, know, you see what I'm saying. Generally, yeah. movies are are uh, marketed towards the junior high male crowd, but that's. Well, marketed tour, but not necessarily just for those people. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, you know, entire demographics. Uh, anyway, that's all I'm. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. I mean, Comics are definitely medium. taking a turn for the adults. Oh, there's a particular book out there. I can't remember the name, but it's basically about sexuality, and uh, it's an indie book. So I guess who really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's gonna say that a kid's gonna pick up an indie book usually? But still, which they saying, should because Ghostbusters is awesome. Yeah, Ghostbusters and and uh, very kid friendly. I'm not say. Let me just reiterate this once again because I don't want anybody to think that I'm I'm, try, I'm trying to curb anyone's creativity. Make whatever you want to. Make it for anyone you want to. But I really wish the big companies would just remember that there are kids, and kids need to be reading, mm-hmm. and comic books are a really good way to get kids into reading. And yeah. and the only kids books that get made most of the time are tie-ins to TVs and movies and old and, and, and old properties and they those and the only and the reason those are the only things that get made is because that's what that, that's the only thing that even kind of sells. If not you, fair. If I were twelve right now and my my mom wouldn't let me buy any comics because all of them are too graphic, that's not fair. Yeah. If you want people to take your medium seriously, uh, make stuff for a broad audience. Get the next generation in, and then give them stuff when they get older. What I'm saying is, uh, keep it flowing, and you will have people that respect your medium a little bit more if it's a broader audience. After after a certain amount of years pass by, I mean, what we had was we were marketing to kids solely, and now we're marketing to adults solely. So we're we're sticking with the same group of people that are growing up. I yeah, thank you, Vince. I don't think I could have said that any better. And also, just when you're making the next generation, make sure you make Voyager and Enterprise good this time, because you're, there's no way you're going <laughs> to... 
But you said the next generation, and I just don't. That's a, that's a good point. Well, anyway, uh, thanks a lot for listening to Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast, and uh, we'll, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. 